Hey guys, so this is a bit of an update on putting my retro sound system together for vinyl and whatever. Um, so I wanted to build a, um, a tube amp. Um, and well, the best one, or the one that I really want to build, won't be ready for a while yet, but it's being built, designed by the French Vintage Radio and Audio Club. And so they have various features in their regular magazines about how the design is going and all the uh, the current versions of it that they're testing, uh, the prototypes, all sorts of info on the performance they're getting. Um, this is uh, real hi-fi stuff. Uh, they're even having uh, uh, very high quality output transformers wound for it and going to be made available to the members of the club and so on. So, <coughs> however, this is going to take a while um, because they're going to spread it, you know, and serialize the, the whole thing with the kit over probably four or five uh, editions of the mag, which comes out every sort of two months or so. So it's probably a year <laughs> before the whole thing is done and ready. Uh, and they're also going to prepare a kit of all the uh, difficult parts that you might need. Um, so that's plan A, but I didn't, you know, I don't want to wait for a year. So here's plan B for the interim. Um, and so I'm sure you guys will have seen this on eBay. Um, and uh, you can uh, show you some of the instructions here. You can uh, guess uh, where it was uh, where it was made. Um, looks like it's meant for primarily the domestic market rather than the international one. But there is a few little words of English on it. Um, and so yes, um, certainly looks the part. Um, not very expensive. Um, the, the mark, the uh, trade name, is probably a little unfortunate in British English. It's called Knob Sound. Um, so, yeah, I won't say any more about that. Even came oddly enough with a warranty card. Um, which I'm not sure exactly what you do with because it doesn't have like a... Uh, it has your name and address on it. But it doesn't have what you do with it. <laughs> so, uh, anyway. So, this is at 25 watts per channel. Um, and just has basically two inputs, a CD and a DVD. They're marked, little selector, uh, volume control, view meter, bass, treble, headphones, and power. Uh, then on the back, we have the uh, speakers left and right, the fuse, uh, two audio ins, and a power cord. Um, no idea what this power cord is. It's not European, it's not American, because both of the pins are exactly the same size. So uh, maybe this is what a, an AC uh, mains cable is like in China. Um, so uh, no indication as to which is live or neutral and there's nothing on here so I gotta chop this off anyway to um, to put a Swiss plug on the end of it. Um, it is 220 volts so we should be okay there. Um, and yeah um, Obviously, I want to make sure I know which is live and which is neutral um, before I go wiring it up. So we may have to open it up and have a look, uh, unless the color code uh, is recognizable. Um, certainly, it looks okay. It was well packed. Um, uh, it arrived, you know, exactly like this in lots of polystyrene and everything else, um, with the tubes fitted. So the valves are already in. Uh, and they look to have survived the journey um, quite well, at least uh, at the moment. I haven't powered it up yet. Um, everything, by the way, that you see here, incidentally, is plastic. It's not metal. Um, and you can you tell immediately when you pick it up, it's very light. Um, although at this piece here, I beg your pardon, looks to be metal. It's powder coated. But uh, this certainly sounds like plastic. And uh, we'll probably have it off and have a look. Um, so that's the plan for the amp uh, interim. Um, I've also ordered up a, uh, a valve driven phono preamp to connect up to the turntable. Um, and when that comes, then I'll have to do the mod to the turntable itself. Um, so I can go directly from the cartridge into the preamp and then into the amp. Um, I've ordered up some speakers. 
I didn't want to trust them to shipping, so I found a local supplier for speakers. Um, and uh, the ones I want um, will be about another 10 days before they're ready, um, and I go pick them up. Um, because fortunately the dealer's about 45 minutes up the road um, and so I really didn't want to risk um, speakers uh, being shipped and so yes that's where we are so we're gonna have a little quick look inside here um, because obviously with four valves um, the rectifier is clearly solid state um, that's fine as I say I don't expect a whole lot from this but we shall see we shall see how it goes So the mains cord looks to be European, at least in color. So um, brown live, blue neutral. So I can go ahead and wire this up with a Swiss plug. And uh, I always use a three pin, because uh, that means the live will always go into live and neutral will go into neutral. We'll wait and see how things work in terms of performance before we decide what to do about our thing. Well guys, uh, <laughs> Just as well, this didn't cost very much because underneath here, right, you would normally have a mains transformer and two audio output transformers, right? That's the whole purpose of having this, what would normally be a large metal screen, okay? So I decided to have a look inside and, uh, well, guess what? This shroud is just a piece of MDF and inside there's nothing <laughs> not a thing there is a mains transformer you can just see down here and a southern grade heat sink over there so these valves or tubes may not even be doing anything other than having their filaments lit up <laughs> and it might just be some big solid state uh, audio amp stuck in a heatsink. Now I gotta open this up and find out. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. You learn as you go. So here we go guys, here's what's inside this thing. Um, you have an AC transformer which has two 6.3 volt taps on it here and two 17 volt taps over here. So not a lot in the way of a B plus here we have a circuit board and a massive big heatsink with a whole bunch of pins soldered onto it which would indicate a uh, solid state amp um, round the back, I don't know if I can show it to you, there's a green circuit board here uh, and all the valves are mounted to that uh, but I can't see in enough to see whether anything other than the heaters are connected but I'd be amazed if anything uh, <laughs> this this uh, MDF receptacle here <laughs> it takes the biscuit <laughs> X <laughs> okay so I'm not gonna be getting any valve sound out of my you know and I mean the way I'll test this obviously is we'll not put it all back together I'll bet this thing will perform just as well without any uh, tubes plugged in at all as it will with all of them plugged in um, <laughs> so there you go. These are the risks one takes when uh, purchasing online. Oh well. Let's get it back together and uh, when my speakers come I'll give it a test. So there we are all put back together and looking lovely. <laughs> my, my new audio shelf ornament. Uh, I gotta go look because I have a terrible feeling that the uh, that the uh, the tube-based phono preamp that I got is probably from the same buyer. I hope not. I'm gonna go look. <laughs> ho hum, ho hum. So it may be a year before I have a proper valve sound anyway on my uh, retro hi-fi. Um, yes, lessons learned. <laughs>